Well, I assume this is my time. <laughs> <clears throat> my name is Corazon Moran, and I am the Associate Pastor for Latino Ministries here in Visalia Methodist Church. And I invite you to, to read along with me if you have your Bibles or if you have it in your cell phones to read the letter to Philippians in chapter 2, verse 4 through 11. And the translation that I am using is the International Children's Translation. <laughs> Why I pick up this translation? Because it's the easy one for me to read it. <laughs> I didn't pick a King, King James. <clears throat> Philippians 2, verses 4 to 11 says, Do not be interested, interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. Be unselfish like Christ. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Christ himself was like God in everything. He was equal with God, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be held onto. He gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. He was born as a man and became like a servant. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. He obeyed even when that caused his death, death on a cross. So God raised Christ to the highest place. God made the name of Christ greater than every other name. God wants every knee to bow to Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Everyone will say, Jesus Christ is Lord and bring glory to God the Father. This is the word of God. I'm going to put aside Pastor Steve Fon. So I don't want to. <clears throat> if I could sum up the book of Philippians in just one thought, it would be keep working and growing in the direction that God has put you in place. Keep working at it. God is completing your work in you. You and me, we are not done yet, but we are getting there. And our attitude should be the same as Jesus. In the book of Philippians, we can find a legacy that Jesus left to us. And that legacy that Jesus, he left many legacies, but among those legacies, he left to us a legacy of ser servanthood, how to be a servant. I have a friend, and my friend, she inherited a lot of money from her father when he died. Unfortunately, it's a very sad story because she never loved her, parent, her father. Her father abandoned the family and he was an abused husband with her mother. So, even though they were very poor when they were little, they were together as a family. However, when the father died and he left 
a legacy of pain, and he left a lot of money. The family, they began to fight against each other. That is very sad. So I always think, what is the legacy that I want to leave in every place where I go? And have you ever think what kind of legacy will you hope to leave? Not only to your children or grandchildren, probably they are people who doesn't have children or grandchildren, but all the people who surround us is watching us. So have you ever seen what a legacy are you going to leave to all the people who surround you. That legacy, it will be a legacy that it will last, or will you leave behind only to your children, grandchildren, or the people around us, only tangible items like money or possessions? The best legacy that we can live is values. And only we can give what we are. The legacy that we will leave to the next generations is strongly related with what we are. We can give only what we are. So the result of our legacy is going to be part of ourselves, a part of our character. What do we believe in? What really matters for me and for you? What are the values do you want to pass on to your next generations? Most of the people want to leave a godly legacy, a legacy that goes beyond, beyond financial capital. Our children or people around us will learn from our actions and lifestyle more than our words. And the process of being intentional about how to instill values in the people who surround us and taking the many steps necessary to create a legacy indeed is a life work for us. A lot of research so shows that one of the most important predictors of happiness and joy in our lives is the congruence of one's life with one's values. When we live a life aligned with our core values, we are going to be more happy, healthier, and resilient in middle of the problems of the life. And values is something that are caught, not taught. Values are different than beliefs, preference, choices, and principles. Leading a life that is consistent with our values is the greatest predictor of joy and happiness. There are many values, and it isn't until later on life for many people like me that most people discover, discover one of the keys to joy and happiness, and is the value to serve other people and to live for purpose than are bigger from than us. The concept of service can be difficult to grasp 
for some people and embrace, and even harder for children and teens who believe that the world revolves around them. All we want, but here is a point. We want to leave a legacy, and the best legacy that we can leave its values. And we want that our children, they can live a life with happiness and with, with a meaning. And the only way that a person can live really a happy life is when we serve others. They, our, they are values we want to instill in our children. Why should we not concentrate it in servanthood, in serving? That is not popular in our culture. Because in our culture, we think that when we receive and we are served, we are blessed and we are happy. But the paradox is that human beings, we have been designed to give. And when we give, we feel more joy and more happiness. Things that helps others or are involved in volunteer opportunities are not only more pleasant to be around, but according to many research, they are also less likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, be depressed, and have behavior problems at school. All parents work very hard for their children and for their families because they want to live for them the best. But sometimes we forget that the best is not possessions, it's not a house, it's not uh, money in a bank account, it's the example and the legacy of service. Human beings find the true happiness when they serve other people. Leading an easy life is associated with being a taker, while leading a meaningful, happy life corresponds with being a giver. In September of 1942, Victor Frankly, a prominent Jewish psychiatrist, do you? That is the word. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and a neurologist in, ben, in, ben, in Vienna was arrested and transported to a Nazi concentration camp. His number as a prisoner, prisoner was 119104. And in one book that he wrote down, the name of the book is Man's Searching for Meaning. He said that the difference between those who have lived and those who had died in the Nazi camp came down to just one thing, meaning of life and serving others regardless of over all own circumstances. Service gives real meaning to our lives. Helping others produces a Happiness effect. People who are volunteers, they experience less stress, anger, and anxiety. Also, they are more resilient, and they can cope in a, very, in a 
easy, more easy way with depression. Volunteer increases self-confidence and the sense of purpose in human beings. And we can talk a lot of, about uh, how serving others is a good thing for us. But today we are celebrating Jesus when he enters into Jerusalem. And Jesus Christ is our model. He's our biggest example of servanthood. The quality which so completely defines the life and character of Jesus is the quality of unselfish servanthood. Jesus said, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. In Jesus, we have a king servant, a servant king. We have a suffering Messiah. And it's something that the culture in, in his time didn't understand because they were expecting a powerful Messiah, a powerful Savior, you know, with the sword, but not with the towel. Our Savior is our great example. Paul, the Apostle Paul, invite us saying, you should have the same attitude toward another that Christ had with us. Paul then followed this exhortation with a strong reminder of the humiliation of Christ in Philippians chapter 2, who, though being God of very God, empty himself by taking the form of a slave. Here in Philippians chapter 2, we have one of the most beautiful Christological passages in the whole Bible. And in that passage, we can see the humiliation of Jesus Christ who made himself a servant. What theologian says with a big word, kenoxis. And we are not going to talk about kenoxis because I cannot explain it with my English. <laughs> but the point is, he is a servant. And he leaves to us a legacy of servanthood. Servant living stands opposed to the primary concerns we see today, where the goal of our culture is more on our own personal happiness and comfort. Jesus gives a very practical example of what it means to serve others. We have a king who led with a towel, washing. He washes the feet of his followers, which was the responsi responsibility of the house servant. And what was the motivation or the intention of Jesus Christ? It was just love. They are a uh, philosopher and theologian that I really like. And I like very much Soren Kierkegaard. He, is a, he was a Danish um, theologian. And he has a devotional that is a classic. And this devotional, he talks about the purity of a heart, of the purity of intention. What I mean is he talks about why we do things. What is the intention behind 
behind all the things that we do. And he speaks, in, he writes down in this devotional that the purity of heart is just one thing and is to please God in all things. Jesus was the only human being who never abused his power. And I feel very humble to be part of this big project that we are here in Visalia, the Methodist Church. I feel very humble because I can serve with a staff who are servants, but also I acknowledge that the church, the, the big treasure of the church is all the volunteers and the disciples that we have here. There is a big quality of people who serve in many ways. And in this, in this day, I want to share with you some of my joys about the legacy that I receive from the church and from all of you. And uh, the first one, I want to say thank you to the ministry, the powerful ministry that is the coffee and cookies. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's a powerful ministry. And almost every Sunday, I, I need to confess then I, I go to the, to the, through the kitchen to pick, to see those powerful servants. <laughs> Let me tell you something. At 10.30, we have a service in Spanish. And when we ended up our service, we invite our visitors and all our sisters and brothers to have a wonderful time with the cookies and the coffee. And you know what? Who are the ones that every week serve the cookies and the coffee for us, for Latino ministry, are people who came to the 915 service. And that is very powerful. I have been in another settings where the establishment of the church has said, we don't want Latino ministry among us. We don't want to look like you. There is no room for you. But here, in this church, we have really find open doors and open hearts and, op and open minds. And not even we can say that we are a family, but our brothers and sisters serve for us the cookies and coffee. And that meant so much to me. And I want to say you, thank you. They are another ministry that we have here in the church. And is um, the ESL classes and the citizenship classes. And that is possible because they are people that are willing to serve. We have, so far, we have two teachers for facilitators for the ESL classes for the English as a second language classes. And we have Gloria Montemagni and we have Alison Maniachi. And Alison, she teach on Fridays from 5.30 to 8. Who wants to volunteer on Friday night? <laughs> Honestly, honestly, it's tough. No, nobody wants to volunteer, you know, on Fridays. But she came on Friday, 
and she brought materials and they sing, they play. And my husband, he told me, Corazón, I am proving my English. And I said, yes, I notice, I notice. He can read and he can write down very good, but his speaking is always a challenge. Well, for adults, our, when we pick a second language as an adult, always the speaking skill is going to be the hardest one. And we have, with the citizenship classes, these months we have a big amount of people. And we can have that classes because we have servant, servant, people who are serving like Jan Johnson and Anna Carmona and Jean Galka. And that is a big task. But they are here to improve people's lives. And my third joy is I'm serving in the missions committee. Do you know that we have a missions committee here in the church? Yes, we have a missions committee, and we have a wonderful chair, which is Mary France. And in the missions committee, the, we are looking for ways to serve our community. And one of the ministries that we have in missions committee and, uh, is Pound of Love Ministry. And I have, uh, Jack has some pics, for, nice pics for, for us. You can see the, the fresh produce. Is the signing table with Joanna? Okay, that, 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 well, so far, I can, every time we, that we give away the food, we are given an average of food every time of 12,000 pounds. That is a lot. The work begins at 9.30 until 9, uh, 1.30. And we have wonderful volunteers. So it's a joy to be part of this ministry, looking around with all those, all those volunteers, packing, giving away the food. but. Let me tell you something. It's not only to give away the food, but the attitude that how we give away the food. And we give away the food with joy. We give away the food dignifying the people. Because people who came for the food sometimes signs 8.30 they are lining up outside. And when we are giving away the food, they are people who are lined up. And they came to me and they asked me, Pastor, I need the food, but I want to help. Can I help in the packaging and giving away the food? Yes, you can help. Everyone is welcome. So, serving is something that gives purpose to our lives. And my, lies, my last joy is I want to show you another peak. And look that group. Well, I think that one of the thing, one of the ways that we can improve people's lives is through music. I have a, a son who plays the violin, but he quit because he want to take a pathway on health, and so he couldn't 
go into the orchestra program. But I have another son who plays the, the violin and another one who plays the cello. And one of my sons is in a high school. The name of the high school is Harmony Magnet Academy. And in June, they are going to New York to play in Carnegie Hall. Can you believe that? That a group of Bali boys and girls are going to play in New York in Carnegie Hall. And every time when I go to the concerts with the orchestra, because they have an orchestra, I cry. I cry. That touched my heart so deeply. When I saw all those youth playing the violins, the violas, the cellos, the bass, and the metal instruments, and I think a way that we can touch life and leave a legacy for youth is through music. So for a long time I was looking for somebody to teach music here in our church. Sometimes not all the families have the means to afford or to pay for music lessons. Well, one day my husband told me, Corazon, there is a Korean young man who wants to be a volunteer to teach guitar lessons in your church. And the only thing that you need is a room, a space, and that's it. And I said, that's it? I don't have to pay anything? No, you don't have to pay anything. And I said, I can't believe it. You see that guy? His name is June. And he came every Sunday from LA. He drives from LA. And he is here at 9.30 teaching guitar to some of our youth. That is so meaningful to me, so meaningful to me. And some of the kids, they didn't want it in the beginning because, you know, playing an instrument, it's a discipline. It's something hard. But by the time, they are appreciating more and more. Today, June is not with us because he decided by Celia is uh, too close for him. He will come back uh, after Easter, but today he is in Bolivia. <laughs> He's in Bolivia. And he brought friends and Korean food and is not that a heart of a servant? What example for our, for our children? Well, do you see my stall? The first time when my husband saw my stall, he told me, oh, that is an ugly stall. <laughs> and I said, shh. Here's the person who gave me the stole. <laughs> she swear for me. And he said, but that look like uh, all rocks and, uh, and, and all rock. And you know how it's spoiled with coffee grains. And, and yes, it's not, it's, it's not pretty, right? It's not really pretty. I want to show you something that is really pretty. Look this toe. Is it pretty? Yeah. A beautiful lady give it to me. She's here. And I don't want to say her name. I want the Lord give to her what uh, the, all the joy that she gave me when she gave me this stole. But with this stole, when I received this stole, I receive also a letter. 
And the, in the letter was written, this store is for you, Pastor Corazon. I received this store when I was ordained. This, uh, it has many pieces of clothes. And the clothes, some of those clothes were used to clean kitchens, to clean rooms. It's a very humble piece of cloth. But I want you to have this, because this store will remember always to you that you are only a servant. That you only a servant. And when you go with your heavenly father, the only legacy that you will live to the people to the people around us if is your service. So even though it's not pretty, it's precious to me. Because remembers me that I am just a servant and that there is only a king, and the king is Jesus Christ. So, what is the legacy that you want to leave to your children, grandchildren, or people around you? I invite you, I encourage you, to continue your good work. Because I can say that the legacy that the Visalia Methodist Church has is a legacy of servanthood. Probably we are not the fanciest church in town, but we are a church with a heart of servanthood. And that is the legacy that we want to pass on onto the next generations and into our community.